President Donald Trump said he's thankful for himself and the difference he made in this country along with his family, most of whom he enjoyed turkey dinner with at his Mar-a-Lago estate on Thursday evening. Asked on Thanksgiving Day to reflect on what he's most thankful for, the president responded, for having a great family and for having made a tremendous difference in this country. I made a tremendous difference in the country, he added. This country's so much stronger now than it was when I took office that you won't believe it. And I mean, you see it, but so much stronger that people can't even believe it. Trump spent his holiday speaking on the phone with U.S. soldiers, visiting a local Coast Guard station, and then heading to his Trump International Golf Course. He had dinner with his family at in the ballroom at Mar-a-Lago that evening. The president sat in between Barron, in a suit, and Melania, who wore a floor-length black dress with long black lace sleeves at a table in the center of the room. Other members of the Trump family were also seated at the same table Tiffany, in a mint green dress, Ivanka, in a strapless floral white dress, with her children, and Eric Trump and his wife Laura. Missing from the menu was romaine lettuce, which the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention warned U.S. consumers not to eat as it may be contaminated with E. coli. Chefs were serving food in a corner of the room. Several tables had long gold clothes with autumn centerpieces, and guests ate off of white plates edged in gold. The president and first lady smiled and waved at the reporters who came into the room to see the dinner festivities. According to Stephanie Grisham, a spokesperson for the East Wing, the menu included a full salad bar including Caesar, wedge, tomato mozzarella, and Greek salads, deviled eggs, and duck prosciutto and melon. However, despite the traditional ingredients in a Caesar salad, romaine lettuce was not used in any of the dishes, the White House confirmed. A chilled seafood display W Florida stone crab, oysters, jumbo shrimp, and clams. A carving station with turkey and all the trimmings, beef tenderloin, lamb and salmon. Entrees of Chilean sea base, red snapper, braised short ribs. Sides include whipped potatoes, sweet potatoes, vegetables and traditional stuffing. And assorted desserts. A man began performing music of the night from Phantom of the Opera shortly before reporters came in to see the president dine a request from the president Grisham said. The president started his morning speaking to various troops for about 25 minutes, talking with an Air Force unit in Afghanistan, Marines in Kuwait, Army soldiers in Afghanistan, Coast Guard officers in Bahrain, and a Navy commander. He spoke partially from a script, the pages of which were visible in front of him as he spoke on the phone. He took questions from the press afterward. The president and his family are spending the Thanksgiving holiday at his estate of Mar-a-Lago. First Lady Melania Trump and his son Barron, last seen in August, boarded Air Force One with the president on Tuesday when he left the White House. Also traveling on the presidential plane were Ivanka Trump and her three children and Tiffany Trump. Eric Trump, his wife Laura and their son who are based in New York arrived separately to join the family for the holiday. Ivanka Trump and her children were spotted outside of Mar-a-Lago while Trump was on the phone with troops who are stationed overseas. Outside the residence, servers were setting up tables for the first family's holiday dinner. Melania and I want to express our gratitude for the sacrifices you make to defend your nation while you are away from your family and loved ones, he told troops at the start of the call. I hope you will take solace in knowing that all of the American families that you hold close to your heart we're all doing well, he added. After Trump spoke to the troops and the press, delivered a tray of giant sandwiches to a Coast Guard troops in Florida on Thanksgiving Day and warned them to watch out as they could gain five pounds from one. There was no sign of First Lady Melania Trump at the president's stop at the Coast Guard station Lake Worth Inlet in Palm Beach, Florida. She had joined him last year in the sandwich delivery. The president noted he'd come to the same station last year, but added he hoped the food was better this year. You gain about five pounds when you eat one of those, he said of the giant submarine sandwiches. He offered to take questions from the troops, but no one asked. He wished the crowd a happy Thanksgiving and praised Coast Guard members for their work in hurricane responses, saying they had saved thousands of lives since he became president. He also shook hands and met with kitchen staff. If you were doing a brand, they would say this is one of the great brand increases, he said, in one of his favorite compliments. Nobody has gone up more than the Coast Guard, he said. He joked with several of the officers and even did a fake arm wrestling move with one of them. And he invited all of them to Mar-a-Lago and said they could play a round of golf. The president even offered a bet.
Anybody that wants to go, you go, he said, inviting them to Mar a Lago. If you break par, I'll give you $100, he said. Melania Trump did join the president when he flew to Mar a Lago on Tuesday. She and son Baron, who hasn't been spotted in public since August, flew on Air Force One with the president to his Florida estate. Melania Trump also attended the annual turkey pardoning earlier Tuesday. Trump went to his golf course after visiting the troops. President Donald Trump said Thursday he has authorized American troops on the U.S.-Mexico border to use lethal force if necessary against an approaching group of migrants while also threatening to close the whole border. Trump, who was speaking with military members and reporters at Mar-a-Lago, also said there certainly could be a government shutdown over border wall funding in December. If they have to, they're going to use lethal force. I've given the OK, Trump said. If they have to. I hope they don't have to. I have no choice, Trump said, and, without providing evidence, added, you're dealing with a minimum of 500 serious criminals and rough people. Earlier this week, Trump approved a memorandum that granted new authority to troops on the border to protect customs and border protection personnel from migrants if they engage in violence. Until the new authority was granted. Troops were not allowed to intervene if CBP personnel came under attack unless they needed to act in their own self-defense. Trump has sent nearly 6,000 troops to the U.S.-Mexico border to protect against a group of migrants coming through Mexico from Central America. Many of the migrants have said they are seeking asylum and fleeing gang violence and persecution in their home countries. Trump ordered the deployment shortly before the midterm elections. When Trump was making the fight against illegal immigration a central part of his pitch for Republicans seeking office, Defense Secretary James Mattis said Wednesday there has been no call for any lethal force from the Department of Homeland Security, saying that any troops backing up customs personnel would not be carrying firearms but could be equipped with shields and batons. Trump on Thursday also said two days ago we closed the border and added, nobody's coming in. He was apparently referring to Monday's temporary closure of all northbound vehicle traffic at the nation's busiest port of entry, San Ysidro. CBP said the lanes were closed to install jersey barriers and concertina wire and to prepare for the potential arrival of thousands of people migrating in a caravan heading towards the border of the United States. The president said if we find that it's uncontrollable or it gets to a point where our people are going to start getting hurt. We will close entry into the country for a period of time until we can get it under control. The whole border. I mean the whole border, Trump said. When they lose control of the border on the Mexico side, we just close the border, Trump said, further explaining that means Mexico will not be able to sell their cars into the United States. Thursday evening. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo reiterated the administration's position that the group will not be allowed to cross into the U.S. The caravans will not be permitted to enter the United States, Pompeo said in a statement. There are real dangers to the safety and human rights of migrants from those who would prey on them. Donald Trump has used Thanksgiving Day to thank himself for making a tremendous difference in this country. Asked what he is most thankful this year, the U.S. leader replied, this country is so much stronger now than it was when I took office and you wouldn't believe it. The president spent the national holiday addressing branches of the U.S. military, visiting a Coast Guard station before heading to his Trump International Golf Course. As well as giving himself a pat on the back, the U.S. leader aired grievances about the courts, trade and migrants heading to the country's Mexico border. His remarks, made from his opulent private Mar-a-Lago club struck an unusually political tone as he spoke with all five branches of the military to wish them happy holidays. It's a disgrace, Mr. Trump said of judges who have blocked his attempts to overhaul U.S. immigration law, as he linked his efforts to secure the border with military missions overseas. The president later threatened to close the U.S. border with Mexico for an undisclosed period of time if his administration determines Mexico has lost control on its side. You probably see over the news what's happening on our southern border, 
Mr. Trump told one Air Force Brigadier General stationed at Bagram Airfield in Afghanistan, adding, I don't have to even ask you. I know what you want to do, you want to make sure that you know who we're letting in. He also continued to rail against the 9th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which he said has become a big thorn in our side. It's a terrible thing, he said, when judges tell you how to protect your border. It's a disgrace. Later, Mr. Trump asked a U.S. Coast Guard commander about trade, which he noted was a very big subject for him personally. We've been taken advantage of for many, many years by bad trade deals, he told the commander, who replied, we don't see any issues in terms of trade right now. And throughout, Mr. Trump was sure to congratulate himself, telling the officers that the county is doing exceptionally well on his watch. I hope that you'll take solace in knowing that all of the American families you hold so close to your heart are all doing well, he said. The nation's doing well economically, better than anybody in the world. He later told reporters nobody's done more for the military than me. I made a tremendous difference in this country. He said, this country is so much stronger now than it was when I took office and you wouldn't believe it and when you see it, we've gotten so much stronger people don't even believe it.